Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what is up? What is good? The king, the king of lightning is here today bringing you guys and gals one piece. Whoa. Oh. Jitsu Dai Sudo. One Piece Chapter 847 Review. If you have not seen the live reaction, there will be a link in the box below for that. Now, that being said, folks, this chapter, the insane big bitch, big mom, dropping a few bombs here or there. Fuck Lola. I don't give a fuck about that Vivera card. If not for Lola, I would have been Pirate King. Gonna be... Kaido, gonna be, Kaido, the monster, the freak himself, Kaido, gonna be red-haired Shanks, and we don't know the time frame, but this was clearly years ago, and years ago, we can easily assume that Whitebeard was in a better condition compared to what we saw during the Marine Ford War, so she could have been a Whitebeard who was in better condition. If the marriage between Lola and whoever had gone down, that, whoa. I mean, it speaks volumes, not necessarily for her, meaning Big Mom. It speaks volumes for the person Lola was going to marry. Who on earth could this person have been? Whoa, I mean, we're talking about either someone has huge influence in the world government but I kind of doubt that because they're a pirate family. So it would have to be pirates or some other powerful kingdom that is not necessarily tied to the world government. Like, just who? It could be someone that we've seen. It could be someone that we haven't seen yet. I don't know. But the possibilities are just like, whoo. Whoa. Endless, man. Like, Kaido would have been terminated. Shanks would have been terminated. Whitebeard in better condition would have been terminated. Big Mom. Very bold claims. But that being said, folks, let's get into the basics here. The pacing and the structure, the characterization, and the story progression. So first and foremost, the pacing and the structure. Relatively speaking, you have about four parts that are relatively simple. You have two short parts at the beginning and the end, where it's Chopper and it's uh, Carrot. And basically, Kara got captured, Chopper's going to make his escape, and then he's going to save Kara in the process, and so on and so forth. Then you have Brooke and Pedro, they're on the move. Then, you have the middle parts. Mainly, it's part three, which is like the meat of the chapter, where you have Big Mom, part three. You have Big Mom talking to Luffy and Nami about Lola while being Pirate King, and Luffy talking smack, you're getting cheeky for a Yonko, which I will get my thoughts on very soon because Luffy's making bold claims, very bold claims, but because she's a Yonko, she has well earned the right to be cheeky, very cheeky. And then part two is Big Mom talking to the Vincimo family. So those are the four parts of the chapter. And overall, from that pacing standpoint, it was relatively fine because part one and part four are really short. Part two is about like, what, like four pages and like the meat of the chapter is part three for certain. So they shift focus here. And in all honesty, I don't really mind not having that much time on Chopper because, I mean, yeah, it's Chopper. And what's going on with Brooke and with Pedro, that's going to be a primary focus in the next chapter, obviously. So the end of this chapter is set up for the next chapter. Again, the end of the chapter is set up. The beginning of the chapter, man, the Chopper stuff is not really... Like, I guess it is important overall, but why exactly? I'm not too sure, but it is what it is there. And then again, the main me here is the Big Mom stuff. Big Mom and Vince Milk, and then Big Mom, Mufi, and Nami. So that's the overall structure and the pacing. Story progression here also ties into the pacing, relatively speaking. Uh, but we find a few things more so when it comes to part three. Now, first and foremost, you have Brooke and Pedro. Once again, they're on the move. Brooke is going to infiltrate the Poneglyph area, which means he's going to fight against Lord Smoothie, which is not going to turn, or it shouldn't turn out well, given how high her bounty is. However, the possibility of Brooke's body negating her powers is just that. It's a possibility. Her powers won't work well on Brooke because Brooke is just bone, and we saw her draining the moisture out of a human being. But even still, it is safe to assume that she has other combat assets as opposed to just draining humans of water. 
hence the 900 million plus Barry Bounty, even more so than a Cracker. If Brooke does beat Smoothie in solo combat, like, I would really question Oda. Like, what the hell, dude? Like, wait, what? Like, this should be just pure stealth for the most part. Ultimately, the goal here is to get a copy of the Poneglyph. So, how that's going to roll, I don't know. I mean, how do they think a copy in the first place? I mean, maybe they have papers lying around in the area of copies of the Poneglyphs. Who knows? We have to see how that rolls out in the next chapters. Number two for story progression is how Big Mom, she was talking about how she got the treasure from him as a means of making up for the candy that he ate. Well, among the treasure is the tama Tamake Tamate Bako Tamate Bako box. I think, yeah, there, there you go. Tamate Bako box. That's what it's called. Basically, she stoked as all hell because this is a very famous box. Now, I had to go back to the story and I reread the parts where this box basically it's the box that housed the energy steroids that Hordy Jones popped in like crazy. The box has mainly two legends. Number one is that it makes someone older, and number two, is that it gives someone the strength of like a 500 to a thousand men, something like that. The thing here is that they are both true, considering that what's inside the box were the energy steroids. Where you pop an energy steroids, it makes you significantly stronger, i.e., Hordy Jones and his crew. But if you use them too much, the end result is you turning old, i.e., at the end of Fishman Island, where Hordy Jones and company, they were old men in like a cell. So basically, all of the vitality in their bodies got drained away because of the usage of the energy steroids. The box has legend lore around it, and Big Mom is stoked. So she thinks that she's gonna get some like crazy ancient shit when she opens the box, like, oh my god. But in actuality, King Neptune and company, they put bombs in the box because they didn't want folks that have access to the energy steroids anymore. And they forgot to mention that to Luffy and company, but the box wound up going to Big Mom anyway. So, fact of the matter here is that when she does open this box in glee, she's going to get a face full of heat and shockwave. Just slammed, and then she's going to be pissed off. What happens after that, what I'm thinking, given how she is so stoked to open the box, and how she's already, like, awing it, and it's not even open yet. When she does open it, she may have one of her tantrums go into complete rage mode. She may wind up harm on the Vince Smoke in the process. And if she does harm on the Vince Smoke, Judge is not going to, or whoever's harmed, is not going to tolerate The Vince Smoke themselves, German 66, are not going to sit there and tolerate that shit. Therefore, we're going to start fighting. And when that happens, Sanji escapes. It's time to dip. It's time to get the fuck out of Dodge. Of course, other things may play out in the process as well, but... Nonetheless, it's going to be very intriguing to see what happens. Number three of story progression is the main meat of the chapter, which is finding out what was going on with Lola and this marriage that would have given Big Mom the power to take out, once again, White Beard in healthier form. White Beard, Kaido, the motherfucker that just fell. 10K brushed it off, beat down Kid Hawking's Apu in the same breath, and we see Kid bloodied in a cell, and this dude is running shit in Wano Kuni with the Shogun of Wano Kuni. This freak of nature who has like a stat sheet. This dude has a stat sheet like Whitebeard did. Whitebeard, when he died, he took like a thousand bullets. He took like 400 some odd cannons. He got stabbed like a million times and still not a scar on his back. This dude had a freaking stat sheet. Like he's escaped like 15 marine prison ships. He sunk them all. He was captured by Yonko. He escaped. No one could kill him. He has a stat that shit and big mom would have taken out kaido and then there's shanks i mean like do we gotta say more about shanks do we have to say anything about shanks actually no we don't because he's shanks the nigga who walked into the middle of the war stopped everybody in their tracks power high blackbeard was like nah <laughs> nah we good we'll come back later for you he good though, all right? Yeah, like, come on, Shanks! And Big Mom said whoever Lola was going to marry would have allowed her to eliminate these competitors and make her the Pirate King. Unless Lola was marrying this guy right here, I don't see, 
I don't see who. Who? 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 I'm really who could have given her so much power to eliminate these competitors. That's fucking crazy, man. Whoa! Number three of story progression is for certain finding out the connection between Lola and Big Mom and why Big Mom has so much hatred for Lola. That being said, finally we're getting to the characterization here. So for this characterization part, number one is gonna be Mont Dor. We found a few things about his abilities. Number one, he has a jail cell in his books, like an actual jail. Number two, more importantly is this, he can house creatures within his world of books and they don't age. I believe that they're pinned down not by Mont Dor. This girl right here, they're being pinned by her. That, so that's minor for her characterization as well, because we're getting to find out what her powers... I mean, I'm assuming that it's her. When we see Luffy and Nami, and like they're pinned at the jail cell, like something's going through their palms, I believe that's Gallup's ability. Because the liquid or the substance that is pinning them, not only Luffy and Nami to the jail cell like this, but also the creatures in the world of books that we saw Big Mom flipping through as she was talking to the Vin Smoke, that substance that's pinning them, it looks like the same thing that we saw in the previous chapter when Gallus was restraining Nami. So I believe it's the same thing. So I'm gonna throw it in as characterization anyway, but for sure it is Mont Dor and how his world of books, if it's in there, it does not age. This world of books has its own separate time flow, or more specifically in this case, it stops time flow, period. Which is, again, a very fascinating power. I don't know if that applies to the user himself, but if it does, then Molten Door can essentially be in his world of books and live forever. But I don't think that would apply to himself, the user. But either way, we find out a little more of Montdor's powers and possibly Gallant. And for her, also, it's the possibility of not feeling pain. Like, Nami would've been crying, like, oh my god, like, that would've been painful for her, and she would've been crying. And then we would've seen, like, blood or whatever come out, probably. But we didn't see that. So, I'm assuming that there's no pain there. Which is also very intriguing as to how her powers work exactly, if, again, we're assuming that it is God's power that is pinning them down. Next for characterization is Big Mom's possible distaste for giants. Why? I mean, she has a size complex, obviously. Judge is talking about the giants. I've only seen oversized humans, but not giants. And she's like, no, you must have missed them. Of course you must have missed them. But when he said that initially, she had the face on like, I will eat you. Like, I will kill you. I will chew on your bones if you don't stop talking right now. And number two, obviously, is Big Mom's hatred for Lola. Because once again, Lola could have given Big Mom the power, but Lola said, nah, I'm not marrying this person, whoever this person is. And for characterization, it does speak volumes for that person as well. Nonetheless, as a result of Lola's rebellion, which is the final part of characterization, because as far as we know, aside from Peckham's, who is not a part of the Charlotte family, and Pound, who was excommunicated anyway, aside from those two, no one in the Charlotte family has gone against Big Mom. It's Mama's word, or death, essentially. But Lola chose not to marry this person. At that point in time, she then rebelled against Big Mom, so she had the strength of resolve and determination to say, Mama, no, I'm not gonna marry this person. I'm gonna go out into the world and do me. Thereby, massively backstabbing Big Mom from the perspective of gaining much more power. Thus, going back to the previous point, of course, Big Mom's hatred for Lola. So, that being said, folks, I'm done with this chapter review. Overall, the chapter, I'm gonna say it was a good plus to great chapter of One Piece. And I'm gonna see you guys and gals later. So, King of Lightning, rate the video, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace. Have a nice goddamn day.